Hey everyone, Coach Simon here with Top Tennis Training and in this video we're going to break down the forehand. We're going to show you some of the most common problems that players will face, how to fix them and how to make your forehand more powerful, more consistent and more accurate. So the foundation of the forehand, this is for every single player in the world, is the way you hold the racket, the grip. So we have the three main grips. We have the Eastern forehand grip, which is the grip that Federer uses. Then we have the semi-Western grip, which is the grip that most ATP and WTA pros will use. And we have the full Western, which is a grip used by Kyrgios and Jack Sock. Now we recommend using the semi-western forehand grip and this is because it allows you to produce aggressive topspin but it also allows you to hit that flatter shot. You can also handle high balls, medium high balls and low balls all using that semi-western. So now that you have the ideal grip it's all about waiting for that forehand and looking to hit your forehand as often as possible we should be aiming to cover around 60 to 70% of the court with that forehand. So when I'm waiting in the ready position, I want to be holding my forehand grip and I want to be looking for my forehand as often as possible. Anything that comes to the right side of my body is going to be a forehand. Anything in the middle of the court is a forehand. And even slightly to my backhand side, I can run around and hit my inside in or inside out forehand. I have to make sure I'm holding the forehand grip and I'm holding either the throat of the racket like this. If you're a two-handed backhand player, you might want to hold the grip of the racket. Either way, you want the racket head to be higher than the grip level because this will create leverage or force in the arm and the racket. We also wait in this position because it makes it much easier to prepare for the forehand, produce power, have the space that we need to accelerate and just hit that better quality stroke. So now that we have the ready position, it's all about the coiling of the upper body and making sure that we get that racket back as early as possible. Time is the most valuable commodity on a tennis court and the earlier we prepare for the forehand the more options we'll have but also we won't feel rushed so we'll be much more relaxed and loose with the arm. There's nothing worse than feeling rushed and being late on the stroke because you've either had late preparation or you've taken too big of a swing. So early preparation is key so as soon as we recognize we're going to hit the forehand that first step is making sure we get from this 12 o'clock position to this two or three o'clock position as quickly as possible. So I'm turning the upper body, my left shoulder is now turning towards that oncoming ball. And I'm imagining that I've got a rubber band around my waist and I'm pulling the rubber band back. I'm coiling the upper body and this is storing energy, explosive energy in the trunk muscles, mainly the side obliques. Now what happens is as we coil and then uncoil, this produces a lot of explosive power in our stroke. So the more we can coil at the beginning of the stroke, the more energy is stored in the trunk. And then as we uncoil, that energy is released into the ball. A good way to imagine this is to imagine you have a rubber band. And as you pull the band back, that's storing that explosive energy in the band. Then when we release, the band fires off. So from this front on position, if I'm imagining the net is now where the camera is, from this 12 o'clock position, if I do nothing with my arms, but I simply coil the upper body now, you can see where my racket goes. From 12 o'clock to one o'clock, to two, to three o'clock, and I've done nothing with the arm independently. So from the back, it's going to look like this. 12, one, two, three. My arm has stayed in the same position, but what's happened is I've coiled the upper body and it's helped me prepare the racket 
I'm already in a very good position to generate power. So now that we've reached that side on position, we can now think about separating the arms and reaching the power position. Now the power position is basically that last phase of the backswing on your forehand. So it's the furthest point back before you start the swing towards that point of contact. So in ideal power position, you'll have your racket head higher than the grip level, which will give you space to accelerate the racket and also creates that leverage in the arm and the racket head. We have the non-hitting arm across the body, which will help us track the ball, but also acts as a balancer. It allows us to balance out the upper body. So we don't want the left arm dead, we want it engaged in the swing. I also have my racket away from the body. I don't want to be tucked in with my elbow. I want to have the space that I need to accelerate and build that momentum. So an arm that's away from the body will be ideal for me actually producing racket head speed. Anything that gives me more racket head speed will give me more power. And in this position, I also want to be thinking about the legs. I want to be loading the legs and making sure that I'm engaging with the lower half of my body. Now it doesn't matter the stands, we can use the open stands. We can use the semi-open stands. Or we can use the neutral stands. But in all three cases, we want to make sure that we're loading the legs. We're creating that ground force as we then drive into the shot. So I'm coiling the body, I'm storing the energy in the major muscles of the trunk, but I'm also storing energy in my leg muscles. One, two, three. And the legs will be the best way for you to increase your power straight away just by loading, unloading, loading, unloading. The legs can take the most amount of work in the body and they're also the strongest muscle group. So why not have them involved on your forehand? From the power position, the next phase is the lag towards that point of contact. So the racket head will start to drop. You might have the racket on edge like this. And you might have your strings closing to the ground like this. Play around with both, see which one suits your forehand more. If you like to hit the ball flatter, having the racket on edge like this will help you. If you want to produce more spin, closing the strings to the ground will help you. Either way, from this position, we now start to uncoil. The legs have started to drive into the shot. We're opening up the trunk. So imagine the rubber band being released. We're now releasing the power into the ball. But then we have this racket lag phase. And this is where the racket head will be lagging behind the grip and the hand. Now it's important that we don't try to force this racket lag uh, position. We want it to occur naturally, we want it to occur by us using the correct muscle groups and generating that swing in a relaxed way. If my arm is relaxed and I go from this position and I keep my, especially the wrist, if I keep it relaxed and then I uncoil, the racket will lag naturally. Now you have some players will have the arm more extended like Federer, Nadal and Vadasco and other players will have the arm closer to the body like Djokovic. Either way, you still want to produce that racket lag because that lag is basically force or leverage over that ball. If you imagine a hammer hitting a nail, 
the bottom of the racket is leading that way like a hammer and at the very last second that's when the racket head comes through and we make contact. Now the contact point ideally we're going to be making contact in front of the body regardless if we use the extended arm or the bent elbow forehand. With both methods it's important that we're reaching towards that ball as if we're going to catch it with our hand. If we're going to catch a ball we wouldn't be catching it on side of us, we'd be catching it in front and this is because both eyes can see that point of contact. Now from the contact point it's all about the follow through and finish and the follow through will change depending on the type of shot you're going for. If you're going for more of a topspin shot the racket head would have started below that point of contact so the racket will be like this we're brushing the back of the ball to produce that aggressive topspin and then we end up with the racket going from racket down position to the racket being up. So the tip of the racket will be pointing towards the sky as I brush the ball. This creates that low to high swing which is crucial in producing that high neck clearance but then the ball to dip with the topspin. So I'm producing that low to high swing, I reach this position and then I finish that windshield wiper motion. So this action here, and eventually I end up with my racket coming around my chest. So I cross the chest finish with the elbow. If I want to hit the ball flatter, I can extend much more towards my target and then finish the swing. Either way, I want to make sure that the elbow has bent and has come across the body when I finish that stroke. Some players will also finish over the shoulder, even a Medvedev likes to finish here quite often. Other players will finish slightly lower. With all three methods, try to ensure that the elbow is bending, which will take the strain off the shoulder muscles and allow you to relax that uh, racket head speed that you've accumulated during that stroke. Now if you want more help with the forehand, we have a free forehand PDF that you can download right away. This will be the five steps to the perfect tennis forehand. This is our free forehand guide. I'll leave the link beneath this video. All you have to do is click on the link that will take you to our website, enter your email address, and we'll send you that PDF right away. So there you have it, some of the most important elements to master for a powerful, consistent, and accurate forehand. Now if you've enjoyed this lesson, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel of course, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Signing off, Coach Simon from TTT, all the best and see you soon. Smash those forehands now.